You're listening to the Hello Awesome Podcast, and this is episode number 16. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. I am your host, JC Lee Polford, and today we are talking about how to keep the vision. Now on Instagram last week, I asked my followers to vote on which topic would be today's episode. If you're not following me on Instagram, you are missing out on a lot of fun and real conversations. So go check that out. Hello, awesome ministries. Okay, so the topics were the secret of being a girl boss or how to keep the vision. And honestly, I was kind of hoping for the girl boss to win because I've already had that episode recorded for a while now. But how to keep the vision won by a landslide. And so here we are. Actually, this has been a topic that's been on my heart for a long time. I even have an article coming out soon on a popular blog about this, and I'll share when it does. But today I want to dive into some reasons why it's hard to keep going towards our God-given dreams and how we can overcome that. As I was writing this episode, because I like to prepare with a script so I can study and pray over it, the Lord really started moving on me to share the differences between repentance and self-deprecation, and conviction and condemnation. I also talk about the sad truth of how we sometimes allow the opinions of others to drive us away from pursuing vision and why we shouldn't focus on perfection over purity in Jesus. I got pretty deep here and I know this topic will come up again. I feel it's something we must revisit often And I'm just thankful the Lord has given me an opportunity to share it with you today. So let's not wait anymore. Here is today's episode, episode number 16, that I am calling How to Keep the Vision. You're listening to the Hello Awesome podcast. I'm JC, and this is the place where we get real, sharing truthful insights that will encourage us to make intentional choices in both life and business. I want to start conversations that not many young Christians today are having. Will you join me? This week's podcast episode is sponsored by Christina Elizabeth Photography. Georgia-based photographer Christina Baker captures breathtaking once-in-a-lifetime moments for couples through intimate sessions for lifestyle photo shoots, engagements, weddings, and elopements. Are you planning on traveling and celebrating at a special destination? No worries. Christina has you covered. In her own words, she says, I like to have fun and celebrate while also capturing the day in a way that represents the bride and groom. Contact Christina today so she can capture the beauty of your special day and you can have those memories for years to come. Mention the special code HelloAwesome for 20% off any wedding package featured on her website, ChristinaElizabethGA.wixsite.com backslash my site. That's K R I S T I N A E L I Z A B E T H G A dot w i x s i t e dot com backslash my site and be sure to follow her on instagram at christina underscore elizabeth underscore photography if you would like clickable links to both christina's website and her instagram page head to the show notes thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today Thank you for also supporting the Hello Awesome podcast. This is episode number 16, and I got a word for you that I hope will help you in this whole idea of keeping the vision. Have you ever felt a pull or urge to do something for God, but had a difficult time following through? What about a dream you know the Lord has placed on your heart, but then a comment from someone made you doubt it? We've all had those moments, and I wanted to talk about that today. In a world that glorifies the hustle and making it big for yourself, we as Christian believers know that in whatever we do, we should give God the glory. Colossians 3.23 says, And whatsoever ye do, 
do it heartedly as to the Lord and not unto men. And because we desire to be used and do great things, we tend to overthink every step. We get in our heads and we usually give up before we even begin because we are so hyper-focused on the details and soon our vision gets blurry. After a while, it might even fade away. Now, one thing I wanted to tell you today is that you are not alone and this is totally normal. It is. We are just humans, guys. We are going to make mistakes and miss the mark at times. To expect perfection from ourselves 100% of the time isn't the gospel. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us so that we continually repent and turn to him for help. Can we just agree that we are so hard on ourselves most of the time and expect so much? We have to just take a deep breath sometimes and give ourselves grace. Yes, give yourself grace and patience. Often when God gives us a dream, it's not about the dream at all. It's about the process getting there. And if we don't slow down during it, we might miss moments of spiritual growth that is needed. Not just to fulfill the vision, but to be closer to God himself. Are we seeking the vision more than the one who gave it to us? We have to be careful not to worship our goals more than Jesus. So how do we keep the vision alive? How do we keep the faith and stay in pursuit of a God-given dream, even when we may be confused about the next step or we're having a hard time moving past our own insecurities? Hopefully I can help answer that for you today because I know what it's like to feel God pulling you into a direction and having doubts. I know what it's like to have a vision, but it seems nothing is happening the way I think it should. Maybe we're overanalyzed our way backwards. And I want you to know that the vision God personally has given you is still attainable as long as you are willing to do your part. There is a difference between keeping the vision alive and letting it go. If we willingly open our palms, drop the dream and walk away, that's letting it go. Doesn't mean God couldn't use you, but you decided you were done. And this is a tragedy, my friend. In my new book, The Glitter Effect, I talk a lot about the power of influence we as believers have in this modern world. If you're interested, you can find it on Amazon. But one of the quotes I have in the book says, the difference between a dreamer and a doer is the follow through. Now, what does that mean? Let's think of it this way. Anyone can be a dreamer. Anyone can have a vision of what they want to do or who they want to become. We as Christians know we must have him as our filter so that we do not go astray and chase the wrong things. And I think somewhere in our thinking, we get anxiety before we even try. We feel insecure, inadequate, maybe even unworthy. We all have felt that way. So don't beat yourself up for feeling normal human emotions. But the real test is what happens when opposition comes. What happens when people mock you or you mock yourself? What happens when you start playing a negative narrative in your mind about how you can't do it? What happens when you finally get ready to move but freeze? Will you be a dreamer or a doer? Will you just have your head in the clouds or will you take action to follow through? Now, Pausing or taking a break for a season is not the same as letting go. You still have the fire brewing, you're just letting it simmer longer. And you might need to do that. Maybe you're a busy college student or a busy mom. And you don't think you can handle following after the vision right now. I get it. That's between you and God. You haven't given up. You're just on pause. You still have the vision, but it's just not the right time. And depending on what that vision is, 
there might not even be a time limit from God. But what if you are in a season to pursue it? What if you're someone who knows that God is calling you right now towards fulfilling that dream, but you're anxious or scared? Well, in order to follow through and become a doer, you'll have to take action. And sometimes that just means to do it scared. It may not sound fun, but I mean it. Moses, Daniel, Jonah, Peter, and so many others did it scared. They had questions, insecurities, pressure. Keeping the vision sometimes means pursuing it beyond how you feel. Keeping the vision sometimes means that no one else will understand the dream, but you know that you were called and you do it anyway, scared and all because you know the voice who truly calls you. Hear me on this. Feeling scared doesn't mean you are less qualified. I think we sometimes feel like we have to experience superhero confidence as we're following the call in order to be used of God. But my goodness, that's not even biblical. It's not. And while you're waiting for some sort of appointed confidence that may never come, you are missing out on truly being used the way God wants you to be used right now. The way he has planned to use you. The majority of the battle happens within our own mind and thoughts. What we think about ourselves, who we think we're supposed to be, how we feel about what is going on. And usually it's an altered perception that we adopt as truth and make decisions based off of conclusions that we've formed ourselves. Do you follow that? God is continually working and moving, and yet we act as though we hold all the power. And if we fall short in one minor area, or even in a major area, we scrap the whole project. It's almost like having a self-deprecating attitude disguised as holiness, but it really isn't. What it really is, is shame that we're accepting. Stay with me here as I go a little bit deeper into this. Self-deprecation is not the same as repentance. When we feel genuine sorrow for something we've done or a flaw that we have and are ready to turn away from it, that is true repentance. That is biblical. But when we constantly berate ourselves about how worthless we are because we can't stop making mistakes and tell ourselves over and over again just how bad we are as a person, that is self-deprecation. That is chipping away at our makeup as a creation of God, and that is not holiness. When we admit we are wrong or have sinned, that's recognizing our situation. But there is nowhere in the Bible that says it's holy to beat yourself with harsh words and strip your dignity because you made a mistake. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 8.1 Conviction and condemnation are not the same thing. Conviction leads to repentance, but condemnation leads to self-deprecation. One brings our focus back to Jesus, and the other keeps our focus on ourselves. Now, what does this have to do with keeping the vision? If we are so focused on ourselves and the mistakes we make, we will miss what Jesus is trying to do through us as we move towards that God-given dream. And I've seen so many people get stuck in this cloud of condemnation, never figuring out that it doesn't make you more holy to cut yourself down. And honestly, being a bully to yourself. The enemy and the world does that enough. You shouldn't join in and help them out. My prayer for anyone stuck at this point of self-deprecation and condemnation is to go back to the basics. Now, I'm not promoting self-love or fluffy affirmations right now. What I am saying is to remember who Jesus is and what he did on the cross. Go to the word. 
that he came so we might have true repentance, a turning away from sin and shame, that he alone is the solution and ask him to help you create a better dialogue for your thoughts so that you no longer have such a negative narrative. That even during the process of pursuing the vision, you can have a spiritually healthy way to deal with your shortcomings that will actually help you succeed. For in him, we live and move and have our being. Acts 17, 28. Maybe you're listening to this and you don't have that problem. Maybe instead of being self-deprecating, you've actually allowed other people more freedom to speak into your life than they really should. One of the greatest tragedies that I have seen so many times is when someone gives up on their God-given vision or dream before they even start because of the opinions of other people. I'm not talking about godly counsel like an authority figure like a pastor. I'm talking about someone who was not appointed to give you godly advice. Does that make sense? Sometimes the voice of condemnation doesn't come from within, but from outside sources. And I'm here to tell you that if the voice is not appointed of God to guide you and correct you, you have the freedom to reject what they say. Why do we feel like we owe it to other people to do what they say or to take their opinions to heart when it's the opposite of what we know? Why do we allow the comments of others to position our passion? This week, I posted about people fear, and I want to share that post with you right now because I think it will help you in keeping the vision that God has given you. The image I shared in the post was one I saw on the page Godly Dating 101. If you are not following them on Instagram, You should, because they share a lot of wisdom that goes beyond dating in the church. The image said, The greatest prison people live in is the fear of what other people think. I love this truth so much, and I wanted to unpack it more. So this is what I wrote as my caption when I posted it on Thursday morning. The greatest tragedy is when we make decisions in our lives based on the opinions of those who are not meant to speak into our lives. We sometimes even decide how deep we want to go with God or not just because of other people. I admit it. It was intimidating to me for a while to pursue a more intimate relationship with Jesus, knowing certain people believed opposite of me. I didn't want to make waves. I didn't want confrontation. I didn't want to be different. But the more I lived in people fear and made personal choices because of it, the more I realized the power I was giving them. By living lukewarm in order to please certain people, I was saying that Calvary didn't matter. I was saying that Jesus wasn't enough to satisfy. I was saying that other people were more important. Now, I don't apologize because they don't apologize for believing opposite of God, so why should I? Are you feeling like you're living in fear of what people might say or think about you? Remember Saul. When he was converted and his name became Paul, people had a lot to say. They even wanted him gone. But Paul kept his eyes on Jesus and the mission he was called to do. And other people were saved because of it. So I say to you today, focus on Jesus. Let him be your defense. And remember that no one can take your story away. That you own and only you can tell it. The impact might just reap eternal rewards and help save someone else out of the fire. You want to know how to keep the vision? Don't let it go. Remember the voice of the one who calls you. Take actionable steps by following through. And stop worrying about being perfect and follow Jesus. Let him establish you. I have this shirt in the shop and the design says purity over perfect. So what does that mean? We have to follow after the Lord's pure direction and plans over our own ideas of what perfect is because our most perfect attempts still fall short when compared to purity in Christ. So don't worry about having it all together or knowing it all. Don't hold yourself under the cloud of condemnation just because you are insecure 
about your role in the calling. When God brings something to your attention that needs to be dealt with, be humble in repentance and not self-deprecation. It will not make you holier. And just remember that it's not really about having a vision or even accomplishing it. It's about the process and allowing God to perfect you his way through it all. It's about letting him change your heart during the journey so that you can be a light in this world and shine his goodness in all you say and do. I hope this episode has helped you understand how to keep the vision. And I'm praying that any chains that have been holding you back are broken in Jesus' name. If you haven't already, please visit the Hello Awesome shop. I've spent time praying and creating products designed to help encourage and uplift your heart as you pursue your God-given vision. Just go to HelloAwesomeMinistries.com and click shop in the menu. There is a clickable link in the show notes. As a thank you for being here and showing up with me, use coupon code HelloAwesome20 for 20% off your purchase today. As always, there is free shipping on all U.S. orders and with every mug or tea purchase, you automatically get the second one at 10% off. Thank you so much, my friend, for allowing me to share my heart with you today in this episode. I know we got real here, but I am glad I have been able to give you what God gave me. I pray you will learn how to keep the vision His way, and I can't wait to chat with you again real soon. If you found this episode inspiring or helpful, would you take a screenshot of it and share it on your Instagram stories, tagging me at Hello Awesome Ministries? It will encourage me that you were blessed. Also, don't forget to leave a review and subscribe so you can tune into future episodes. For more information about all things Hello Awesome, head to HelloAwesomeShop.com. Until next time, keep your chin up, beautiful.